Hey, YouTube, what goes on? Welcome to Live at 7.05. What's going on, everybody? How are we doing tonight, guys? Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Uh, turns out uh, getting all these figures on uh, the uh, the old screen here took a little bit longer <laughs> than I thought it would, guys. But uh, boom, here we are this week, guys. I picked up the She-Hulk Marvel Legends Fan Channel Green exclusive figure today. Completely on happenstance. Found it at GameStop. If you're curious where I got it at, if you didn't see it on Instagram, I bought it today. Uh, again, uh, if you want to see the daily updates, follow me over at Instagram, disavowed underscore 12. Uh, I post things daily for local collectors to know what's out there. So uh, very cool to see everybody here tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking some Marvel animated universe action. Uh, I figured what a better topic to throw out there tonight as a group for us to discuss as our overall weekly topic than to have a retrospective on some of the uh, past animated uh, 90s comics uh, cartoons that did so much to inspire all of us. So let's go through the channel. Uh, let's go through the comments, see who's here this week, guys. Okay, figures, what's going on? <laughs> I almost forgot it was Wednesday, too. It's why I was late. <laughs> Hey, Stanley, what's going on, man? How are you doing, man? What's up? How are you doing? Yo, Studio Dorbo, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for stopping by live at 7.05. Hey, Cody, what's going on, man? How are you, sir? Four Feathers is in the house. What's going on, man? What's up? What's up? What's up? Six packs and knickknacks. What goes on, everybody? Another Wednesday is upon us. You know it, man. Happy hump day. Valley 559, what's going on, bud? How are you, sir? Good to see you here. Cody says, currently waiting on his Amazon package. Ooh, excellent. Uh, what's coming in, Cody? What's in the box? <laughs> Stanley says, do any of you have the Marvel Legends X-Men Wolverine Amazon exclusive? Um, I do not. I have the uh, the one that was just more the general release for the for the uh, X-Men Studios, for, for the Fox figures. Uh, Studio says, yep, and waiting on the man of the hour. I think this is the first time in two weeks I haven't gotten a figure. No way, man. Uh, hey, that's okay. Save some money for the next week, right? Uh, Forfeather says, no, you piqued my interest. Uh, let's see here. What else we have? I'm trying to get through everybody here who's left a comment so far. Uh, Six Pack says, Prime has been at the door twice today. Grab the Ultimate Edition. Uh, Shitsuke Nakamura for $17 on Monday Monday morning. Arrived uh, like they went in a war zone. Yeah, uh, Amazon Prime, guys. I'm sure a lot of people bought some stuff this week. Okay, Figure says the $120 Wolverine set. That's a pass for me. Oh, yeah, if you were talking about the, the box set, I passed on the Amazon uh, Wolverine box set because I'm positive that I'll be on sale within like six months. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Okay, figure says she Hulk. <laughs> That's right, man. Picked her up. I sold my gray one and originally got her because I wanted to fund my uh, my habit in other ways, knowing we'd eventually get this repaint. Jay Girk, the collector. What goes on? How are you, sir? Stanley says, "Oh, not the one that was okay. The Jackman one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have again. I have the standard release, not the uh, the pack, unfortunately." Uh, okay, figure says green She Hulk. What a concept. Yeah, you know, I was talking with uh, Greg about this uh, earlier. Uh, over on the uh, the sidebar. So we'll get to that talk. Uh, Kragen says, what's good, Disabout? How's it going? Hey, man, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Trans Aaron, PA Coalition, Pennsylvania Hunters represent, right? Uh, Stan says, all the Prime Day sales for Legends were the ones that no one wants. Yes, yeah, Stan, they're trying to clear out that, uh, that, that warehouse for sure. And then Cody says, for this one today, at least it's a DC multiverse figure. And the Marvel Legends Joe Fix-It Wave Thor guy, don't know his name, but need him for the bath. And still many more packages tomorrow. Whew. All right, guys. I think we got through all the comments. I missed you. I apologize. So as I said this week, guys, we're going to be unboxing the She-Hulk uh, fan channel exclusive. You will not be seeing this at Walmart or Target or big box locations. It is fan channel only, at least as of now, which means you'll only be seeing it uh, at places like GameStop, possibly Best Buy, comic book shops, obviously online retailers like Big Bad Toy Store, um, Dorkside Toys. Uh, all the guys that are the, the typical online people you could buy from. But again, besides just opening a figure, guys, you know, and again, let's talk our hauls and talk our pickups. I wanted to take tonight as an opportunity to kind of do a bit of a retrospective on the animated universe. Um, if you were around my age, which is 30 <laughs> years old, uh, you probably grew up watching at least the X-Men animated series and the Spider-Man animated series. Um, that actually belonged to a greater animated uh, universe, which at the time when I was younger, I didn't realize that. So we'll get into that a little bit tonight, uh, as well as talking about everybody's pickups. Yo, Midwest Toy Box. Thanks for stopping by, man. Glad to see you here. Yes, she does look dope. I agree. Very excited to have picked her up. I didn't plan on it. And when I saw it, I said, man, I need that. 
because it, it scratches that animated series itch. Jay Girk says, I did pre-order the Wolverine box set, but he may cancel. Ooh. Hey, 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 hang on to it, man. Hang on to it. I, I'd say, I say, stay strong and keep it. So, guys, let me know what else you picked up. Obviously, big week, Amazon Prime week. Uh, Target had a spend $100, uh, get $25 off special. Shout out to Six Packs and Knickknacks, giving me the heads up on that. Um, I actually had the Happy Hogan pack pre ordered, which is 50. Um, I canceled it. I reordered it because it was still up for pre-order. I added the Ironmonger and uh, good old uh, uh, Ebediah Stain, I believe his name is, Jeff Bridges character, uh, got it over 100 and then the $25 got knocked off and I had some target money like the uh, that you save on the app. So I ended up getting both two packs, which is worth like 100 and, I don't know, 35, 140 some dollars uh, down for under like 90 something. So those are my big pre-orders this week that I jumped into. Hey, what's going on, man? How are you? Cody says, I am younger than 30, but love watching at least X-Men today. Cody, if you're younger than 30, man, we're going to give you a, a bit of a fill in here on some of these older series you may want to watch over on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Super Deathonator said, saw her at Toys R Us last week. So I'm guessing you are a Canada uh, citizen then, sir. That's awesome. Um, we should talk after. Right? You guys get a lot more Joes up there in your store since we don't have... Uh, have Toys R Us anymore. Uh, Cody says, I was close to ordering that Target 2-pack. Can't wait. Okay, figure says, I'm hoping for a She-Hulk with big 80s hair and leg warmers. Dude, they're at least going to do a red She-Hulk. I wanted to say that. Think about it. They did a, a, a Green Hulk, another Green Hulk. They did a Gray Hulk. They did a Red Hulk. Now they're doing a Composite Hulk. Oh, there he goes. Friggin', friggin Dr. Doom. I knew he wouldn't stay up. Legs suck. Um, so think about that. They did all those different variations on the body. They're going to cash in on this body again. So we have the gray, which should have been the green first, in my opinion. But uh, they gave us the gray one first in the Super Scroll Wave. Now we're getting the green one. I know there's a red one that's old, but I guarantee you we'll see this in red. I guarantee you this will be in red within the next year or so. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Six Pack says, I bought a lot of poop this week. Uh, Super Detonator says, but they didn't want me to buy her because she's supposed to be out in July. Interesting. Did they uh, stick you with the dreaded street date? Uh, Four Feather says, my wife picked me up the gray one from VR Hobbies as a Father's Day gift. Now I got to get this one. Sorry if I enabled you, sir. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. You got that from VR Hobbies, man. Very cool of your wife also to support the habit. That's always awesome. Hey, Dame, what's up? What's up? She looks great. I agree. I'm very excited to have her in my collection. Six Pack says, sending the wallet to rehab next week. Yeah, man. Between the wallet and the liver, they're all dying quickly. Uh, Cody says, I'm hoping we get an A-bomb figure. That would be awesome. Add to that Hulk family. Also really like that She-Hulk. Thank you, Super Detonator. I agree as well. So guys, before we get to cracking this open this week, what I want to do is just take some brief time to kind of give some background information here um, on the um, Marvel Animated Universe. Now, the reason I have all these other figures thrown out here, we have the Ben Grimm thing, which was the uh, more recent uh, Build-A-Figure release, okay? Um, the one that came with Super Scroll. That was not the, that's not the Walgreens exclusive. I have it, but it's back there. It's kind of behind a bunch of things right now. Uh, we have two of the X-Men, right? We have Spidey hanging out down here. We have obviously the Hulk back there. Uh, we have Dr. Doom himself. We have the leader, which is from the Hulk. And we have MODOK as well. And kind of Scarlet off to the side. Grab the mover. So the reason these are all on the screen, everybody, is because if you were unaware, which I know you know at least about X-Men, back in the 90s, we had our first ever Marvel Universe. I know we all think of the MCU. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, um, if you weren't aware, and actually they're all on Disney Plus, they actually conjured together through multiple networks, uh, multiple TV networks, an animated universe that connected. Okay, so obviously things started with X Men the Animated Series, right? So that's why uh, a lot of us that are, are thirty and over, I, I think, are, are so into the figures. Um, I know I have a whole shelf uh, and box full of my original. Uh, figures from Toy Biz. Uh, Toy Biz was actually owned by Marvel. Uh, and a lot of these cartoons were created for the purpose of selling toys. Um, if you weren't aware of that, and that's why most cartoons are created to sell toys. Um, and uh, essentially, um, X-Men animated series was really plagued by uh, a lot of bad luck at the beginning. Um, they made a pilot called uh, Kitty Pride of X-Men, X-Men Pride of X-Men. Uh, that was actually available on YouTube. If you look up Pride of the X-Men, if you're familiar with the X-Men arcade cabinet from the arcades, um, that's the cartoon that game was based on. That's why Dazzler's in it and Colossus and Nightcrawler. They scrapped that idea. And 
they instead came up with X-Men the Animated Series. So essentially, you have Eric and Julia Leewald, uh, who were the, the original writers of X-Men Animated Series, and they put together this cartoon um, for Fox. Uh, Stan Lee um, was, was very instrumental in, in getting Fox to take this cartoon on. It was very ambitious at the time. Uh, obviously, X-Men were very popular in the 90s, um, so they did obviously decide they wanted to go that route. Uh, and essentially, what we end up getting is uh, this amazing cartoon, which almost got canceled. Uh, it debuted in 1992 on Halloween, October 31st, where we got the first episode, Night in the Sentinels Part 1. Then the following week, we got Night in the Sentinels Part 2. But here's the problem. They weren't ready at the other episodes. The animation got slowed up in the animation house. So we ended up not getting another episode of X-Men for three weeks after episode two. Then we had to go two months so we got to episode four. So Fox was, was very concerned early on with the animated series of X-Men. However, it proved so popular, they were willing to obviously uh, take that time to develop it and, and let it breathe a little bit until they actually got it put together. So essentially, X-Men Animated ran from 1992 to 1997. So we had five full seasons, 76 episodes. It is on uh, Disney+. Plus. I highly suggest you watch it if you're not familiar. If you have seen it, go back and rewatch it because it's freaking amazing. It might even be better watching it a second time as an adult when you actually see how nuanced it is with how serious the topics are that are actually covered uh, on the show. So uh, X-Men Animated essentially, uh, again, was developed by Eric and Julia Liebald, were the writers, Larry Houston. Uh, I want to plug Infinity Equation here because Infinity Equation, right when the uh, the apocalypse, the pandemic kicked in, they actually had uh, the Liebalds and then Larry Houston on their show, on Infinity Equation. So if you go back on YouTube to the Infinity Equation podcast, check them out, give them a sub and a follow on Instagram. They interviewed the writers and illustrator from X-Men Animated. It was amazing, amazing. They then went on and had some of the voice actors on as well. It was so good. So check that out, guys. They had the voice of Wolverine on there. It was so good. Uh, but basically, due to the success of X-Men Animated, what they then decided to do was try to spin off, spin off two more. So what we then get uh, in uh, 1994... We get two new cartoons. We get the Fantastic Four and we get Iron Man. Now, I don't have Iron Man here because I'm going to get the modular Iron Man in this new Iron Man wave with the Build-A-Bear <laughs> with also Major. Uh, also major. Um, but uh, essentially, that's the Iron Man we all knew from when I was a kid, when you were kids. Uh, but the cartoon tied together a little bit, but it was a Fox Animation Hour. And they are back-to-back -back cartoons of Fantastic Four and Iron Man. Uh, it started in 1994, ran through 1996, 26 episodes. Unfortunately, the first season of each was not good. Uh, the Fantastic Four cartoon was actually so critically panned that there's actually a Fantastic Four comic book where they actually make fun of the cartoon in the comic. Uh, so I enjoyed it because I kind of have those rose tinted glasses from when I was a kid. However, uh, they drastically repackaged both shows uh, for the second two seasons. They changed the intros, they changed the tone a little bit, so on and so forth. But unfortunately, they didn't catch on and the toys weren't selling very well because of that. Um, so even though it was on a different network than Fox, unfortunately, it got canceled. both got canceled after two seasons. Um, that then led us into the start of the Spider-Man animated series, which is definitely more of a spiritual successor to uh, the... X-Men uh, than anything else was, even though they all did tie together in some way, which we'll get to. Uh, Spider-Man ended up running for the longest in regard to when the show ended. All right, and this is the retro Spider-Man, by the way, guys. This is the one that came on the card that's extremely hard to find right now. I have, I have this one, I have one on card. So basically what ended up happening was um, X-Men Animated was still running. So they were able to really tie together X-Men Animated and Spider-Man Animated. That's where you see the two series cross over the most. Spider-Man made two appearances on, over on the X-Men cartoon, and then some of the X-Men later carried over on a Spider-Man animated, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. Uh, but then, around the same time, so meanwhile, Spider-Man is 1994 through 1998, five seasons, 65 episodes, very similar to the X-Men, although the X-Men had more episodes, they had 76. But basically, in 1996, we have the Incredible Hulk then getting their his own uh, cartoon, which brings to Jennifer Walters here. So the Hulk comes out in 96. It's on UPN 9. I'll never freaking forget it. Um, and the Hulk, I think, arguably, <laughs> other than X-Men, was one of the best cartoons. Very dark tone. Um, season 1, unfortunately, didn't perform very well. However, um, the tone was amazing to me. It's what you wanted in a Hulk cartoon. Um, season 2, we then get a lighter tone 
where they do bring in um, his cousin, Jennifer Walters, a.k.a. She-Hulk, and they actually change the title of the cartoon to Hulk and She-Hulk at that time. So they literally kind of did like a soft reboot. It still mattered, like the things that happened still occurred. However, uh, the way it played out, they really changed the tone up and they essentially make She-Hulk almost the main character of the show, which in, in my memory sucked, unfortunately. Um, it wasn't terrible in season two, ended up only having about eight episodes. Um, but what you ended up getting here between X-Men, Iron Man, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, and Incredible Hulk are these cartoons that had cameos popping up from each other's shows. Uh, Iron Man, MODOK was actually one of the main villains. That's why MODOK is here. He was paired up with the Mandarin, of course. And essentially, these shows went on to tie together in different ways. So, guys, I've talked a lot here without talking to you, which I usually don't like to do. Hey, Sleeping Collectibles, what's up, man? How are you? But what I'd like to do, guys, is this. Um, let's talk a little bit about with each other about this. First of all, let me know in the chat, who watched all of these cartoons? You know, I, everybody here had to watch X-Men and Spider-Man. But uh, let's start there. X-Men. What is your favorite X-Men animated series episode? Okay, so my personal favorite was probably, obviously, the Wolverine tie-ins. I enjoyed those. But uh, Dark Phoenix Saga was amazing with X-Men animated series. Now, X-Men is where we started to see everything bleed together. Okay, that's where we ended up getting the X-Men and Spider-Man running together, as I said earlier. However, over in Fantastic Four, in their final episode, we actually have the Juggernaut, Spider-Man, the Punisher, making appearances in the cartoon as cameos. The first episode of Spider-Man we ever saw, he references the Avengers, Fantastic Four, Incredible Hulk, and then on Hulk, we even had Iron Man crossing over. So all these different characters bled into each other, where eventually the only cartoon that was still running was X-Men, I'm sorry, Spider-Man animated series. So everything at this point was basically canceled. Spider-Man made it till 1998, which is the one that made it the longest in terms of how late into the 90s. And if you haven't seen it, guys, the culmination of all these cartoons turned out to be Secret Wars. And essentially, we're given the Secret Wars storyline involving characters from all these cartoons in the Spider-Man animated series on Battleworld, which was freaking amazing. We essentially had Iron Man. We had Captain America. We had Red Skull. We had, obviously, Spider-Man. We had Storm. We had the Fantastic Four, the entire team. We had the Lizard, which obviously was a character from Spider-Man animated series. We had Black Cat from the animated series. We essentially get all these characters thrown in. Uh, Doctor Doom was in almost all these cartoons at some point. Doom shows up in basically all these cartoons for at least a two-episode run. But essentially, we end up with this amazing freaking crossover, which essentially was the big this culminating moment uh, in the Spider-Man animated series. So I suggest going through Disney+. Plus. When you have time, um, again, it can be a little bit hard because they don't directly tie together, you know, perfectly. You know, they 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 do. They were all on different networks, which is amazing. Nowadays, you can never have something like this. Nowadays, you would never be able to pull this off. They literally had like four different uh, TV networks working together to tie these together. You would never have that nowadays, uh, just due to the way things work with with television, unfortunately. So Sleeping said he loved the Dark Phoenix song. Yeah, dude, I freaking loved it. It was so good. Um, oh, man. And as a kid, I didn't know much about the, that comic book because I was so young. So it was so cool, you know, seeing that, you know, and then later on in life, revisiting it when I read the comic books. Four for their says he mainly watched the X-Men series. Yeah, man. X-Men was definitely the one that did it the most. But again, I, 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 what I'd like to basically say is uh, the, these cartoons, although they were 25, what, 30 years ago? We're, yeah, almost 30 years now. These cartoons drastically affect almost all of us on how we buy action figures today. You know, I collect action figures now, probably because I ran up from the bus stop every day to watch reruns of the X-Men, right, on weekdays. Or because I was watching uh, the Fantastic Four Sundays after church um, on the Animation Hour, which was syndicated, okay? Um, so again, all these characters in one way or another tie into the animated universe. That's why I bought a lot of these eventually although right now i have my jim lee shelf for the x-men which i pulled these from eventually i will have all these on the same shelf tied together uh because they're all from the animated series which was just so freaking good back in the day so that's just a real brief what we got about 20 minute 19 minute uh retrospective guys uh feel free again let me know which of these cartoons you have watched or haven't watched um uh, there's just so many good ones that we could talk about obviously um that i really enjoyed um but again, that, and again, you see now 
they know the uh, Hasbro knows this. That's why we get these carded figures. You know, these carded figures, if you weren't aware, they, they're basically knockoffs. What do you want to call it? Uh, inspiration inspired by the, the cards, uh, obviously from the nineties. So the Spider-Man carded figures right now, uh, those are basically all examples of what the cards looked like when I was a kid that I was buying that I have, over, you know, that I have on a shelf over here for, you know, on my, my, my retro shelf. Uh, VR hobbies. I've talked about them before. If you're in the area, check out their website or their their uh, their store. Their their brick and mortar. They have a ton of these old carded figures, which are freaking awesome. Four Feather says uh, he will check out the other series and rewatch the Love It X Men. That is awesome, definitely, dude. Hey, Greg, what's up, man? Don't worry about. It. Thanks for stopping by, man. You're just in time. About to crack this open, right? We just did a little brief background on the animated universe. Um, but guys, again, I would probably suggest X Men's. I think, in my estimation, the best. Uh, I'm still rewatching Spider Man. I kind of stopped because they took it off Disney Plus for a short amount of time. But uh, Iron Man and Fantastic Four and Hulk, try to watch those three series relatively together if you can. I don't know if there's a definitive watching order out there or not. I've never tried to find it if there was. Um, however, um, they do tie together, not perfectly. It's not like a comic book where they tell you to go to part one and part two, like a crossover event. But they bleed together just enough that you can enjoy it while you watch. But uh, definitely a big change, though. Fantastic Four, I'm going to tell you right now, season one is rough. Season one is rough for Fantastic Four. Um, it is it is rough to get through. Um, just get through it. and uh, you know, uh, Season two is much better. Okay, That's the best advice I can give you for FF. So let's see here what kind of comments we got going on. Greg giving shout-outs. Tyler62, how you doing, man? I want to see more Cobra Air Vehicles. They were so cool. Yeah, man, that would be cool. Hey, hey, Jimmy Han's in the house. That's it, Jimmy Han rises. Who is Greg Miller? Is that like, no, that's not Legends and Pops. That's Legends underscore and underscore Pops. Get it right. <laughs> How you doing, Jimmy? Thanks for making it, buddy. All right, guys. So here is our She-Hulk. I blabbed on enough. Again, if you want to watch any of these cartoons, check out Disney+. Plus. Um, I just kind of did a real brief just rundown again here. And also, I highly suggest checking out the Infinity Equation podcast. They had an awesome interview with the Lee Walds. Uh, there's also some really good books out there. Jay Girk, the collector. Um, if you're still there, buddy, give us a shout and let us know the name of the book. Um, I know you picked it up. I think that the Lee Walls had a hand in that. So let us know what you think, guys. Um, let's see. So, guys, here we are. Let's take a look at it. I've said guys a lot tonight, haven't I? Sorry about that. So first thing to note is here, you guys know I love the box. I said, guys, again, you know I'm a big box man, right, of these, these figures. This is not the figure you're getting. <laughs> so they did the Gray Hulk the first time around, which I still think Green Hulk. Green She-Hulk should have been first, okay? Uh, they gave us the gray one for whatever reason, right? Got the repaint. This is depicting her from the more recent Avengers run that's going on right now. Um, I think it's by Al Ewing, but I might be wrong. Let me know in the comments. I know it's not Dan Slott. I'm not reading the current run. I don't like it. I didn't like the team they put together, so I stayed away from it and collected X-Men again instead. But you're not. this is not the figure, right? This is more a representation of what she looks like in the comic books right now. This is more the classic She-Hulk. Now, if you don't know a lot about She-Hulk, just in general, uh, it's Jennifer Walters, the cousin of Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk. Um, I believe she gets a blood transfusion. They show it in the cartoon uh, from her cousin Bruce, giving her the powers of the Hulk. However, she is permanently, I believe, for the, for the most part, other than maybe certain parts of the, the, the run, she's more permanently in the body of the She-Hulk. I think she can revert sometimes, but she's almost always looking like this. Uh, she's an attorney. She's a lawyer. She has an upcoming Disney Plus series that's going to be on TV pretty soon on Disney Plus. Um, I believe that Bruce Banner, a.k.a. not Eric Banna, right? <laughs> Our MCU version, uh, Mark Ruffalo, is going to pop up over there on that show as well, from what I understand. Uh, but she's a lawyer, so there is some talk of Matt Murdock if he turns up in one of the, the Spider-Man um, multiverse movie. All right, or should say the Doctor Strange multiverse movie, uh, or or the Spider Man uh, Part Three. There's a possibility that Matt Murdock might get involved with Jennifer Walters since they're both lawyers. Okay, so we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, Greg says the back of the box is hot. <laughs> Jimmy says I'm an Asian, but no sensation. I disagree. Stanley says, Have you ever watched Netflix? Yeah, Netflix Daredevil is freaking amazing, dude. So upset when they canceled that. So here we do get the write-up, which says Jennifer Walters mutates into She-Hulk, a massive muscled green hero with boundless strength and the will to do good. Uh, side art is pretty cool. One thing I know Greg and I were talking earlier, how this is very much just a repaint, which it is. However, one cool thing that I noticed on the MCU collector's video, the eyes are different. 
So the eyes were only kind of grayed out uh, on the gray version. Whereas here we get kind of like a yellowish, which you'll see this when I take it out of the box for the head sculpt. And here we actually get regular pupils in her eyes. And then obviously we get the extra head sculpt as well. So uh, logo on the bottom, logo on the top. Showed you the back already. There's the bottom, $24.99. This is not marked up from what I understand. Um, I didn't buy it at first. I actually went back and purchased it after I left because Big Bad also has it for $24.99. So I'm thinking $24.99 is the actual MSRP, I believe you would say, on this one for sure. Um, box artwork is effing awesome. I agree. Um, very cool indeed. All right, guys. So let me get my little cutting tool out here to slice into this. I always forget to pull that out ahead of time. So I want to do some comparisons with Jennifer Walters. Uh, she was the only one there. I don't know if somebody purchased another one or if there's getting one per store to start. So if you're looking to pick this up, I did get it at GameStop. It should also be available on all the major online retailers like Big Bad, Dorkside. I don't know if VR Hobbies has it for pre-order or not. They very much could because it is a fan channel. So that would mean they could get it. But yeah, check out VR Hobbies as well. So here it is coming out of the box. Very good figure. Oh, let's get the flaps out of the way. Flaps. All right, there it is. And I'm immediately remembering how I was awestruck by the height of this figure. When I, the original gray one that I had. So here's a close look at the head sculpt, which again, we'll get a better look at when it's out of the plastic. Let me give it a good old uh, ah, plastic scent. You must love it, right? Um, so very excited to get this thing out of the packaging. Let's just get right to it. I got buried a lead any further than I already have. Um, so there she is. We do get alternate hands as well. Get the hands out here in a second, guys. Always tough for me to rip through the tape to get to those hands. But here they come. Boom. All right. So there's our alternate hands. So the alternate hands that come uh, detached are gripping hand and gripping hand. So more or less like a choke hand. Get those up here. Here's the alternate head sculpt which this is the more like raging, angry version of Jennifer Walters that you would see when she's kind of like angry. They did a nice job with the hair. This is the original head sculpt, actually. Just repainted. The weathering's decent on this. So again, they did something different with the eyes. You can see here, the eyes are actually different on this head. Same mouth, same teeth, same gritting face. Again, the hair looks nice, you know, from the original head sculpt. Um, I'm in it to win it because I really like the new head sculpt, which is a much more subdued version of her, which is not like freaking out. So the arms do not go down all the way. So if you're trying to do that, you're not going to get them down all the way. Here is the head sculpt up close. You can see much more stoic. Obviously, the hair is straightened, more feminine here uh, in this version. Uh, obviously, the color scheme is completely green. That's the point of sale on this figure. I think the ab work is amazing on this. <laughs> Honestly, I think one of the reasons I bought this, I actually saw the abs and I was like, that's freaking insane. <laughs> like That's why I'm almost positive they're going to do a red version of this because why you're not gonna be able to use this body for much else. So why wouldn't you use this body uh, for another uh, Hulk figure, obviously. So there she is up on the stand. Let's take a look at some comments here and then we will do some comparisons with her as well and see what's going on. Greg says big, bad toy store marks up a lot now. Okay. Interesting. Um, I, I think it was 24 99 when I checked. Um, Greg says you can get it at GameStop during the we're still cleaning for COVID hours. Yeah, Greg was saying earlier how there's they still have those late hours. Andre says, I'm so tired of getting alternate hands as accessories. Yeah, Andre, I am too, but talk to Black Series collectors because Black Series collectors will tell you they would easily take alternate hands. Black Series is notorious for not giving accessories, especially other hands. So I think a lot of Black Series people might disagree and say they'd love to get some hands there. Midwest says he's like in the box. Andre says, and his superhero toys, I would much rather get superpower. I do agree with that, Andre. Effects look much better than they, than everything else does. Um, she gets Tim's pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I do not have a six pack. I have a keg at this point, unfortunately. Hey, Zach Dieter. How you doing, man? What's up? Hi, Zach. Sorry to miss you coming in, buddy. So again, there is our She-Hulk. So um, I'm going to keep that head sculpt on just because of the fact that we already know it's the same as the original Cotter. Um, one thing I know MCU collector said, so I'm kind of ripping off his review here. The hair is very green, um, which I, I feel like in the comics, it, it had green tones, but it wasn't completely green. If that makes any sense. 
So the main, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, guys, uh, elbows are not double. They're not double jointed, but they did it when they announced this figure originally, the gray. They said it's that deeper cut. So you're going to get more than 90 on the elbow. So actually you can have her kind of making a muscle, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I kind of like that on the shelf right there, right? Yeah, she all biceps. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can get her that way. All right. But there she is. So let's do some size comparisons with her. The one I wanted to see the most, obviously, is how she stacks up against the Green Hulk. If you're wondering, the greens are not the same greens. Um, the greens on the She-Hulk seems to be a little bit brighter and more vibrant than the greens on the actual Hulk. And again, this is the Incredible Hulk that came with uh, the Wolverine 2-pack, if you were wondering. Um, did you show off the crosshair you picked up? Um, if you're talking to me, I did not buy crosshair yet, Jimmy. Uh, I only bought Hunter. Hey, Zach. Hey, hello again. Uh, that There's the one and only Graphite Dust. I miss Graphite coming in. Sorry if I did. Uh, let's see here. Jareth, what's up? She looks dope. Yeah, man, I agree. Awesome pose. Yeah, I'm loving that that arm, that elbow. So here we go, guys. There has That's how she, she basically uh, lines up with the Hulk. So again, you can see she comes up to about the middle of his back, which... Again, like she's not the size of a Hulk. Now, in the in the uh, comic book that's currently being written, uh, she is much larger than this, much more savage looking, if you will, savage Hulk, right? But you can see again the greens. If you can get a good look at those, the greens are slightly different between the two, um, which I'm okay with. I mean, they don't have to be perfectly the same. Um, I don't need that to be exact. Oh, okay, Zach, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. So throwing out those different names, guys, between Instagram and YouTube, I get confused easily. So that's how she compares with the Hulk. Now, the other character, which was from that series, who was the main villain or antagonist, was the leader. So again, the whole reason I bought the leader was because of the fact I obviously wanted to be able to do what we're doing right now, which is have all of them in the collection. I'm going to try to slide this up. Hopefully nothing catastrophic happens. I always tell myself after the fact, I should pull this closer once they're out of the box. There we go. There we go, guys. So much better look there. You can definitely see here that um, the leader, also a different color of green, is Alter Egos. Here we go. He's, he's wearing his glasses now like Clark Kent, right? So uh, thanks for being here, Zach. But again, you can definitely see a big difference here in size. The point of the leader is that he is small. You know, they make a big deal about that in the Hulk cartoon. You know, obviously he, when his accident occurred, uh, his brain got large. He was obviously also in the original um, Edward Norton Jr., MCU Hulk movie. Yes, that's in the MCU, people. People try to say that the, that version's not in the MCU. It is in the MCU. It is canon, okay? If it wasn't canon, we wouldn't have Thunderbolt Ross running around in Black Widow in two weeks or in Civil War running the, the freaking under, underwater prison, the raft, okay? So Edward Norton Jr. is canon. It is, period. Eric Bana, no. Let's not talk about Eric Bana as the Hulk, okay? Not gonna do it. Not gonna happen. Greg says, is leader infused with gamma radiation? How did it happen? Greg, that's a good question. In the movie, um, he does have blood of Bruce Banner mixed with his blood. I believe he gets a head injury and it mixes together. The comic book version, I believe he might be at the explosion site. You guys are going to have to let me know and correct me if I'm wrong because I can't completely remember that part. Andre says, thank you for clarification on that. I've always wondered if that movie was... Uh, yes, it is part. The Edward Norton Jr. is absolutely part. He had creative differences with the director and with the Marvel team. He wanted that movie to be much longer uh, than it was, and he parted ways, which worked out pretty well because I do really love, obviously, Mark Ruffalo. But it does make you wonder what it would have been like to see um, Tony Stark out there, Robert Downey Jr., mixing it up with uh, some of the acting chops. Uh, of Edward Norton Jr., who's just an amazing actor. So that's how they stack up together with the Hulks. Let's get our Incredible Hulk in the background here. Let's get the leader off to the side with him as well. So continuing our Marvel cinematic comparisons, um, not, um, anim animated universe comparisons. Now, again, this is not technically meant as an animated version of the thing. We are getting those. The ones that are going to be on car will be more animated. But as far as our legends go, you can see here She-Hulk. Standing roughly the same height. Roughly the same height, I would say, is the thing. I think they're right about the same. Wouldn't you say so? My stand's kind of puttering a little bit here tonight. So I think, they, I don't know, things a little bit, yeah, things a little bit taller. If I kind of get down here, eye level the camera, you can kind of see, like, his head. Let's look at a piece of paper here. 
you can kind of see here that it blocks it out a little bit too much. He's about maybe a centimeter taller, I would say. But if you're a McFarlane, you know, if, 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 if you're a McFarlane guy, you know, it's about scale. You know, you, you take the toys, you know, and if you, if you want the She-Hulk to be bigger than the thing, you put the thing back here, now the She-Hulk's bigger. But if you bring the, the thing up here and you put the She-Hulk back there, well, now the thing's bigger. It's all about the reference and the perspective, right? Uh, just Jay Hernandez, I love stealing your bit. I, I'm nowhere as good at it as you are, but I love doing it nonetheless. Um, by the way, if you were curious, this is the Cyclops blast effect that I do put with Modok. I know a lot of people had said um, they wish he came with his own blast effect. I took the Cyclops one, just kind of shoved it in there, and it fits pretty well. There we go. It does fall from time to time. It'll probably fall again. So there is our comparison with the thing. Definitely helpful, I think, when looking at those. Hey, you and what's up, man? How you doing, buddy? How you doing, sir? Thanks for stopping by live at 705 tonight. It's greatly appreciated. Um, Greg says, oh, that's the guy in the movie, but uh, that's all they showed, right? Uh, yes. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Ewan says, we need an A-bomb and a scar. Yeah. Now, get the whole Hulk family going, right? Ewan says, I'm doing good. Thanks, Greg. Getting my first vaccine. Good luck with that. Hope it goes well for you. A lot of people say they want A-bomb. So somebody get uh, Ryan Ting on the phone and let him know or call Dwight up and say, hey, we need it. Uh, Nicktimus Prime says, do you have the select Im Im um, Immortal Hulk? Um, I do not have that. I believe that the green on that, though, is pretty similar to the green on this. I've been, I've been told that's very much just a version of him as a select. I could be wrong. I don't have him. But that's what I've been told over time. Um, and, and these don't match. So I would think she does not match the Immortal Hulk either. That would be my uneducated guess. Um, let's see here. Protect yourself. Agreed. Stanley says, I hope Charlie Cox is in Spider-Man. Oh, dude, if, oh, I'm going to lose my mind. If Charlie Cox is on screen, even as just uh, the actor, I'd lose my mind. Uh, hey, yep, no worries. You got it, you and No problem, man. I can't stop playing with Ursa. Oh, yeah. Okay, figures. Dude, you're so freaking lucky. Not even lucky. You're smart. You're smart because you managed to get your pre-order in. So if you didn't know, guys, OK Figures, check out his Instagram. Uh, he did build uh, Ursa Major tonight, which is awesome. I can't wait. Mine's pre-ordered through VR Hobbies. It's the first time I pre-ordered an entire wave through VR Hobbies. So it's just a matter of when it comes in. You know, the owner, Kevin's a great dude. Uh, he said he should be in hopefully soon. So I'm very excited to get that in hand as well. So hoping that happens relatively shortly because I definitely want to build that bear, build the bear. So yeah, man, check out OK Figures. He has some pretty cool pictures up there already. Uh, so there's She-Hulk. Uh, let's get She-Hulk compared to Spider-Man. So obviously Spidey is a smaller figure. Again, this is the Spidey that is on the uh, new buck. This is the uh, vintage retro. This is not the Pizza Boy Spider-Man, all right, or, or Pizza Spider-Man. So there you can see she is definitely about a head taller, much thicker uh, th than he is, which which is obvious, I believe. Um See, Ewan says the Ursa Major is great. I'm calling him as best bath of the year. Yeah, it's going to be hard to beat him out. It really is. Just the creativity of it, you know, it completes a team, which anytime you're completing a team, I think along with Depths, Dark Star, I think her name is, uh, in the same wave. You know, when you're completing a team, obviously it's pretty awesome as well. Um, so there's our comparison with Spidey. Get him off to the side. Anybody else you want to see her compared to? Again, obviously I do have a lot of figures behind me. Um, I could grab them. One I'm looking at right now, actually. So talking of build figures of the year, why don't we put her up against Mr. Hyde? I haven't talked about Mr. Hyde in a while. He kind of stands in the back there by my arcade cabinets. But let's get Mr. Hyde here on, on, on camera. And here's Mr. Hyde on the rotating base. So obviously he's going to be much larger than She-Hulk is. However, again, seeing him posed up with her will give you a good idea on her size if you have this figure uh, in your collection. Um, I would argue that this is also in consideration for build a figure of the year. It was such a random pick, but I just love it. He's like a angry, drunken, huge leprechaun guy, which is kind of like me. So um, Four Feather says, yes, Kevin is great and fills those pre-orders. I'm going to have him... Uh, have to hit him up, put a few in. Yeah, man, definitely support VR Hobbies. Great store. Greg says, I bet, okay, I wasn't going to get that wave. Yeah, mine's on the way. Yeah, that's how it happens, man. It happens that quick, right? So that kind of shows how she stacks up there uh, with that particular build-a-figure. Um, if you were curious about that. 
And I'll tell you what, let's get really weird, 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 and wacky, weird, crazy, wacky, wild stuff here. My Johnny Carson impersonation, all of Dana Carvey from Saturday Night Live back in the day. You youngsters probably have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. It's okay. Um, just go watch SNL from the 90s. You'll get it. Let's get her compared with freaking this guy. Let's get her up there with a the NECA figure, which I really mixed together here. But here she is with Metalhead. Love the Metalhead stand so well, by the way. <laughs> That's one cool thing about Metalhead is that uh, those giant feet stand very well. So Metalhead, as a 7-inch figure, you can see, even as a 7-inch figure, she's taller than him. So with the scale, she's still going to sit taller without the perspective when you have her up there on the, on the stand. Uh, Stan says Captain America's wings is, is a bad bath. Yeah, I was not happy. I don't like the wings thing. Give us a figure. I'm sorry. If you want to give us wings, give us wings with the figure and make it a deluxe figure. That's why I look at it. Do something like they did with Archangel. You know, $39.99, give us the wings or whatever, right? Um, you would need you order it. That's awesome. Jareth says, yes, Stanley. It's kind of disappointing. Jareth also says, I wish that they would put the wings with the Falcon. Yeah, they really should have done that. So there is She-Hulk with our, uh, again, Ninja Turtles. Glad. Let's get him off back on the shelf. Because what happens is, guys, I start throwing things around. And all of a sudden, I got one heck of a mess I have to clean up here in the toy room. Um, and uh, let's see here. Let's do one more comparison just because i think this would be hilarious let's see how she stacks up against the man the myth the legend yoda <laughs> there she is with yoda from the luke two pack uh that i got on clearance at target needless to say he's a bit of an ankle biter <laughs> when it comes to who you got going on there uh, okay bigger says you're gonna be pleased yeah you know what that wave itself you have the the modular iron man which is gonna be awesome He's basically the animated Iron Man, which, by the way, you'll get him on a carded figure. You're going to have that happen. I'm telling you right now, you're going to get that Iron Man on a carded, on a card, retro card. It's going to be shinier. It's going to look just like the cartoon, even more so. So I'll keep it, and then they'll show us that, and I'll get mad at myself that I, I freaking uh, did that, right? So there's our Yoda comparison, because you know when you woke up this morning, you needed and craved a Yoda She-Hulk comparison. You'll sleep better knowing what they look like. And it probably makes sense, guys. Wolverine, known for fighting the Hulk, not so much She-Hulk. Wolverine, you can see that his uh, mask tips barely come to her shoulders. So I think that's a very good representation there uh, of taking your standard smaller Wolverine figure. I mean, literally looking at it, her butt uh, literally is like in the middle of his back. So really showing you here the difference in size and scale with those particular particular figures that you can see right in front of you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Super Detonator says, I wondered how she would look with ripped Barbie jeans on. Uh, Jimmy says, did anybody think it was strange that Falcon winced in pain when Walker pulled his wings off? Yeah, maybe like he had phantom pains. I don't know. It was kind of odd, right? Um, so yeah, guys. So that's pretty much all I have for tonight. I mean, obviously we're, we're getting into the summer here. Um, we've talked mostly about, you know, obviously the animated series, um, you know, and, and different cartoons and the shield figure tonight. However, one thing, um, I know we're all hoping to find pretty soon is going to be the re-release of the GI Joe classifieds. Um, supposedly they're coming very soon. So hopefully that will be happening shortly. Um, I'm hoping to obviously find some more of the troopers, which, I know they're essentially the same as the uh, infantry, just with some more accessories and repaint. But the paint looks so much better. The black and the blue look so much better, in my opinion, that I will definitely pick up more of those if I see them. Um, so I'd be curious to see if we do manage to find more of those in stores anytime soon. Hopefully we will. Um, hey, what's going on? Century the Mad Collector in the house. What's going on, man? Thanks for stopping by, dude. Very kind of you to stop by. Nobody's ever late, man. I run late. <laughs> if I'm running late, that's a problem, right? If any of you run late, not a problem at all. It's just cool that you stop by at all. I appreciate you being here, man. Uh, okay, Vigor says he needs me a beachhead. You know, I got one beachhead, but I kind of would like another because honestly, it doesn't stand real well. So I don't know if it's just mine or if it's other ones. Greg says, LOL, I think they're pulling our leg. Yeah, Greg, I'm really curious, man. You know, I think people online are playing games, posting photos that they're not actually seeing them. I think they're old photos. Four Feather says there's supposed to be a She-Hulk movie. Um, it's actually not a movie. It's going to be a Disney Plus series. So she has a Disney Plus series coming up 
which uh, will be, uh, again, on Disney+. Plus. Um, I believe it's supposed to be six episodes, I think, six episodes is what they were calling for. I'm not positive on that, but I think it was six. Um, so you are going to also have the crossover where you will have uh, the Hulk from the MCU popping in on that. So I'm pretty excited to see that happen. Uh, six Pack says, neighbor, stop by. I'm back. <laughs> Tell your neighbor I said hi. Uh, last week, my target had eight major bloods. Glad you found those, Tyler. That's awesome. Okay, figures, whatever you and Greg do, you guys do. <laughs> Stanley says, who do you think will be in the October 2021 Spider-Man wave? I think it's based on No Way Home. Mm. Wouldn't mind a Nick Fury popping up. That'd be kind of cool. I would take that. I would take that. So, all right, guys. So, unless you have any other questions or comments, let me know. We're getting ready to tie things up here momentarily. There goes Muttley. It's not an episode of Love 75. Let's Muttley takes a dive. So, guys, if you're looking for She-Hulk, GameStop, you know, my GameStops are no better than anybody else's GameStops are. So, there's probably a good possibility if you check your GameStop that you will find uh, that figure at your GameStop. Um, also, if you didn't see on my Instagram post, which, by the way, if you're not following over at Instagram, it's uh, disavowed underscore 12 to get daily updates and information on these toys. And basically, I post things on a daily basis because my YouTube videos come out maybe once or twice a week. But if you follow over at Instagram, you're able to see that information a lot quicker that if you want to make decisions to buy things quicker, you can. So um, there's our lineup. There's our figures. Doom's kind of cast it off to the side here because he doesn't stand very well. So... Let's get ready to call it a night, everybody. I think we're about at that point. So everybody, if you're looking for She-Hulk, hope you find her. If I can leave you on just a couple final notes, hop over to Infinity Equation, guys. I can't stress enough how awesome it was to see their episode from about a year ago with the writers of X-Men Animated Series. Uh, they also talked to the voice of uh, Wolverine. I can't think of his name right now off the top of my head. I think he's Australian. Um, but I, I, it was so awesome hearing them talk about how the show was developed and so on and so forth. So I would suggest checking that out if you can. Also, Disney Plus does have all the animated shows on Disney Plus. So if you want to hop over to Disney Plus and check those out, um, they took Spider-Man down for like a few weeks and it's back up again, but I would be scared to sit and wait too long that eventually they do pull them from being, uh, on there. So again, unless it's uh, with digital media, you can never rely on it actually being there. Um, Greg, I'm ordering you to leave right now. I'm not even gonna say goodbye to you. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just kidding, uh, guys. Yeah, I, as Greg said to remind me, if you're new, please give me a sub here on YouTube. We we're trying to push the 2,000 subs. Uh, that's my goal by the end of summer to hit 2,000. If we hit 2,000, we'll do a big giveaway. We'll do it here on Live 705. I've been saving up figures since I hit like 500. So I'd like to give some stuff away if we had 2,000 subs. Also, Instagram, just about underscore 12 for daily updates. Again, you'll know the day happens on my story, what you can find, as opposed to waiting for when it might be too late watching the YouTube. Also, I should have a new hunt video going up either tomorrow or Friday. I'm leaning toward Friday, probably. Uh, current hunt video is doing pretty well. It's outperforming most of its other videos. That's up there where I found a lot of cool stuff. So everybody, thank you so much again for stopping by. I know your time is precious. I know you're all busy. So, and I know there's lots and lots of toy content that's out there. So I really appreciate when people stop by and chill and support. So thank you for doing that. It's greatly appreciated more than I can even begin to tell you. So um, with that said, Craig and says, yeah, that X-Men episode of Infinity Equation was dope. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Check out Infinity Equation guys. Great episodes where they do those deep dives uh, on the animated series. So everybody, thanks so much for being here. Greatly appreciate it. Have a great night. Stay safe. Stay hydrated. It's freaking hot outside. Unless you're in Alaska or Canada or whatever, it's freaking hot. Drink some water. <laughs> Try it. And thank you, Zach. Zach says, leave a comment. I, I didn't say that. Thank you. Please leave a comment down below if you don't mind. It helps push the video out a little bit more uh, to other people as well. So everybody, stay safe. Have a great night. We'll catch you next time, and I'll be seeing all of you at the pegs. <laughs>